Hello, neighbor Al here. I have gotten a lot of questions about my press, modifications I've done to it, and especially the press tray that I had made last year. Um, I'm not in the business of selling press trays, so uh, please don't call me or email me and ask me to send you a press tray. I can't do that. I will tell you about my press tray, and I will tell you what I think is probably the best method for you to get a press tray, okay? Um, that's it. Um, so here, here we go. I think it's really important to take a look at the press as a whole though before we dive into the press tray. This is not a short video. Sit back, put your feet up, and have a pencil and paper because you're going to have to take notes. I'm not going to write it all down. So here we go. There be the press, okay? You'll notice the press is on a movable set of wheels. It's on a movable platform. Now, it ain't pretty because I just pulled it out of storage. The original press stopped here. You'll notice I have doubled up plywood and channel. People have asked me, well, what do you support the press tray for underneath the pressure point? That's it. And that's all in the original video. So you need to pay attention to that original video. But there's a significant amount of steel underneath that plywood that is more than adequate for handling the pressure of the 20-ton jack. Siding down, you'll see that the frame itself is bolted onto the um, base that is also made of strut bolted to a wheel set that I got from, you said it, Harbor Freight. So that forms the basic structure of what's going on down here. In back, I took angle and square stock tubing and I welded them together. All right, so those are all welded. Let's see if I can get a shot on the inside there. There you go. So you can see that's welded and then that's in turn welded to the angle. So that's very solidly attached. Underneath, again, elbow material welded in place to support the back side. The back side only has to support the weight of the new stack of cheeses that you're building. It doesn't have to support the pressure. It's up to you to do the measurements so that you get a nice smooth transition. So I sunk carriage bolts here so they pull down flush. They go into the angle stock that's underneath there and I get a nice transition. This should be painted. Um, I need to get to that. The health inspector didn't say anything last year but it's starting to get a little gnarly. I'm thinking sometime after the season next summer I'll sandblast this and I'll paint it but again, no one's complaining. It doesn't touch food. Now, the traveling beam, again, I replaced it. There's a video about that. I don't know how this got bent. I gotta whack that over with a hammer. But again, that's two pieces of thick wall, quarter inch thick wall square stock. Quarter inch or eighth, I say in the video. It's got a very long traveling seam. It goes all the way on the top and on the bottom. It's very robust. It won't bend. Please notice the jack is held in place by pressure. I just thread it up the top nut to hold it in place. It is not bolted in place. If you start drilling holes into this plate, you could compromise it. So I don't recommend it. That's all I got to say about that. Now let's talk about the tray. The tray is 304 stainless steel. It was made for me by an Amish tinsmith. So please don't ask for his phone number. Our settlement doesn't use telephones. Um, most settlements in the United States do. Our settlement does not use telephones. Um, it is not welded, TIG welded, because our settlement doesn't use electricity. It is soldered together using food safe solder. It is the same solder that he uses for making maple syrup arches. 
So if you know anyone who makes a maple syrup or maintains and repairs syrup evaporators, that's who you want to go to to have you make the tray. That's super important. You, the people who do maple syrup are the people you want to go to to make the tray. They will have the raw material and the skill and the materials, the know-how, like a, the, an arch, um, a break, I mean, for bending things. They'll know what to do. Okay. The drain on this is a sanitary fitting. It's a weld-in-place sanitary fitting. I use inch and a half, which is also the same as 50.5 millimeter. All right, and that it was soldered in place. And you can just see the seam there. I'm not so sure how well I'm focusing. That was put into place, but that gives you a nice flush drain. Super important. Another thing, as much as possible, all these edges are rolled and you want to have them fill it with solder or go back behind and use a food safe um, caulk to fill those gaps in. Your health inspector will thank you and then you will thank me. So try to get those filled in, but you certainly want the edges rolled not only to prevent um, food from getting down in, but also a cutting edge where you can nick and slice yourself. Super important. Secondly, you'll see that there's a cutout to fit the vertical portions of the arbor. You got to do that, okay? You don't want, you, you want these lips in place. I'm sorry for the hand motion, I can't help it, but you want these lips in place because juice will flow. You'll get juice here. I take really thin pieces of cutting board like you would get at um, any big box store those really thin cutting boards and I slide them down here between the cheeses and the arbor to divert the juice away from those open edges works great so don't sweat it all right now I'm gonna go back oh I use again inch and a half sanitary fittings these are clamped on using the appropriate parts and I use a butterfly valve which is super easy to clean. This is a locking butterfly. You pull the handle out, you turn it. I'm sorry, you pull the handle back, it turns. That's a $40 part. The big issue here, it makes me happy, it makes the food inspector happy, it makes the customers happy. When this thing is cleaned and prepped, it is aseptic. It is clean. And the parts are clean and I do not sweat that. And that's like a big deal for me. Oh, this is not product placement. So I'm going to lock... Oh, other thing. People ask me about press trays. It's in the original video. I buy them from Good Nature. They are not inexpensive. The part number is on the original video. Um, I've just found them to be the most reliable. Up here, this is my form, made by the same Amish guy. You can see I got a little corrosion on it. I'll buff that up. But again, food safe solder all the way around. Little handles to make it easy for me to lift it. A little lip on the bottom, make it easy to place it. Um, possibly as much as a tenth the cost of buying a commercially built one. Talk to your syruping guy, lake woman, syrup, arch, maintainer, maker, evaporator person, because that's where you get those. Just have them locally made, much cheaper than commercially made. Now I'm going to lock this onto the tripod. And I'm going to walk over there and do my best. Actually, I'm going to slide this a little bit to the diagonal so you can see me do some fancy stuff. And, um, oh my lord, I lost my tape measure after all that. It's supposed to be clipped up here. Okay, I'm feeling really stupid, so here's the deal. 
from here to the back end, five feet. Okay, it's five feet. Measure your arch. There are different models of this press. So it's like really important. You are responsible for the measurement from in here, inside, that's this width. I recommend you give yourself one quarter inch to play with. So it should be this distance minus one quarter inch. That's your inside. Okay? The height. You hate it when this happens. Where's the tape measure? Anyway, the height, I'm going to say one hand. How's that? You know, um, five inches, five, six inches. The real point is when you're pressing down that cheese, fluid will build up. You want to have room for that to go, but you don't want it to go down, be so high that it's difficult to press because you're not getting full and you're limiting the travel. So I would give it five inches. On the sides, not in front, only on the sides, you've got this turned lip. The lip is a half inch high and it's one inch shoulder. Half inch high, one inch shoulder. So this is the inside of your arbor minus a quarter inch. And you're going to add another inch coming out for the shoulder and you're going to go up a half inch and don't forget these are rolled and sealed. The fittings that I'm getting down here, the sanitary fittings, I buy them on eBay. I buy them directly from China. I have no qualms about doing that because most everything you get in the United States was made there anyway, but I save a lot of money. But two the three weeks lead time. Plan ahead. That punch worked perfectly, the hole was perfect for the punch that the tinsmith had. He didn't have to cut a hole, he punched it and it slipped in like a glove. Nice, and just perfect. Then he soldered it in place. Um, how your craftsman Craftswoman builds arches and puts it together, I don't know. But the steel of the collar is certainly thick enough that you could TIG and go around that. But it's so thin, it might be easy to punch through. Again, they may want to solder. But remember, food safe solder. I'm seeing that same sort of fuzzy look on here that I had on those other pieces. Don't forget. Um, it's lead free, so I'm not concerned about it. Solder is very corrosive, so you do need a food safe solder. If you use a lead based solder, the acid in the solder would leach lead out. And while it's, it's a minuscule amount, your customers would have reason to be concerned because you're not using the right thing. This is a 304 stainless. Have I forgotten anything? This width here, inside your arbor, minus a quarter inch so you can drop it in. You're going to need to have a cutout here, which was in the original video, and I'll put that in the body text. If you look at the bottom below where the video is right now, there are words. And there's a little section that says more. Click more. You'll see more words, and you need to know those. Again, on the width of that cutout that you put here, give yourself a quarter inch. Give yourself a little play because when you put this in, you're going to want to be able to turn and drop it into place. What I'll do to clean this whole thing up in the week or so is I'll probably use Barman's Friend or something like that and I will hand wash this whole thing. Scrub it down, make sure there's no loose paint left remaining on it. It's going to look shiny. It'll look really good. Same thing applies to the cheese frame. Now, the cheese frame, cheese rack, cheese frame, I've got one inch clearance on the outside all the way around. You're going to get a jelly roll on your cheese when you press. You don't want it going out 
outside the pressure point or you're losing that, the potential of that crushed fruit. You want it staying inside. This is two inches tall. If you make it too tall, you're making problems for yourself. Just don't do it. You're not going to extract more. You're not going to save time. Just go with the flow. That's it. So, that's it. Again, I don't know if you can see this in the frame, but the jack simply rests on the traveling beam. It is not bolted or held in place. One thing to check for, and I hope it's in the video frame, there's a cup that the top of the jack fits up into. Always make sure it rests that this jack is firm. If it starts to come loose, you can tear that cup. And it's kind of a mess and it ruined my day one day. So you just want to make sure that's, that's golden. The other thing is on the air jack. These things work great. Um, there's a little exhaust port here. You can always put a little piece of um, foam or something there to help catch any oil vapor that may be coming out. Now very quickly I want to give credit where credit's due. Uh, Reverend Nat, Portland, Oregon, he took the press design, bumped it up a notch. From there, Noble Cider, Carolinas, North Carolina? Anyway, you bumped it up a notch, especially with the jack. This has been such a cool thing because I've been watching this evolve this metamorphosis starting from a humble Harbor Freight Arbor Jack and turning into presses that are affordable and you can run a small scale you know farm stand cider press operation with these especially if you use safe and sanitary stuff. There isn't a product on the market like it right now so I just say to you thank you very much to Reverend Nat and to Noble Cider for bumping this up a notch each time everyone adds a little something to it. I just want to show you where I was now. Um, it helps if you know how to weld for the bottom. Bolts come loose. That's all I got to say about that. Bolts come loose, it starts wiggling, it's a pain in the butt. Find a friend who welds if you don't know how to do it yourself. And one of the things that shoulda, coulda, oughta done this summer is maybe paint it up doesn't have to be a food safe paint because food doesn't come in contact. You're preventing corrosion. That's your big deal. Okay, I'm done. Measurements are by design. What's your environment? Which press did you get? Height, approximately five inches. I use inch and a half sanitary fittings. I like them. I really like using the butterfly valve because the juice can keep running. I close the valve. I take the bucket out. I put another bucket in. I open the valve. When I'm all done, I take the valve off. Valves have two parts that you need to make sure you get a hold of. You know somebody who's got a winery or a brewery? Each part in a triclover is held together with a clamp that flips across and you put a gasket between it. So in this case, I put the gasket in, I go to the next fitting, you should watch my friend Jennifer Dean do this. She just flips these things around like a juggler, it's amazing. And they clamp together. What makes these so special is one, you can turn them any which way you want to get the direction you want. You don't have to worry about leaking because then you tighten it. And there are no threads to capture contamination. They're perfectly easy to clean. So it's they're fairly straightforward. Nothing's free. You know, you're going to have to go online and buy your stuff. I have not had good luck finding these in domestic uh, brewer supplies. Just no joy. So I recommend you do the eBay route. I'm done. Thank you. Um, please thumbs up. Okay? Bye-bye.